I'm Michael Hazel with Enonic USA. This tutorial will demonstrate the basic process of app development for Enonic XP with our MVC framework. This is a static HTML prototype of the Xeon one page theme by Shape Bootstrap. I've already created the site in XP and added all the parts except for the person list. So now I'm going to recreate this person list as a dynamic and configurable component part for Enonic XP using some XML, HTML Timeleaf, and server-side JavaScript. First, I'll open the Xeon project in my IDE. I'm using the free IntelliJ Community Edition. Under the Site Parts folder, I'll create a new folder for the person list part. The part needs an HTML file with the same name. For this first step, I'll just copy and paste the static HTML from the source. For this to work in Timeleaf, I'll need to close the BR and the image elements. I'm also removing this div with the container class because of a slight change I made to the designer CSS. Later, I'll modify this file with some Timeleaf attributes to make it dynamic. I already saved the images in the Assets Images folder. Now I'll update the image SRC attributes to use these images. When I open a preview of the part in a browser, you can see that the markup is rendering and the images are loading, but this isolated part doesn't have any CSS applied yet. Once I add this part component to my page in the Content Manager, I'll be able to preview it with the styling. Now I'll deploy the app and add the person list part below the pricing part. It doesn't render yet because it needs a JavaScript controller. So now I'll add a simple controller file, personlist.js, and I'll make it use Timeleaf to render the static HTML. For this Timeleaf function to work, Enonic's Timeleaf library must be included in the build.gradle dependency section. The controller has a function to handle the get request. It returns the body whose value is the Timeleaf rendering of the HTML file. It's not yet dynamic, so I'll just pass an empty object to the Timeleaf render function. When the HTML file is rendered in the site, assets like the image files can't be accessed directly. The image elements need to be modified to use the portal.assetURL view function. Attributes that start with data-th are timeleaf attributes that can dynamically change the rendering. In this case, it is simply changing the image SRC values to use the asset URLs required by Nonic XP. This is a timeleaf attribute that I've added, but the portal asset URL function is specific to Nonic. Now I'll deploy the app again and check that the part renders correctly. Now it's time to make the part dynamic. The website content editors will need the ability to update the title and text without editing code. They'll also need to be able to add and remove people in the list. They can do this by editing forms that I will define with two XML files. The first is a content type for the people. Each person content needs a name, a job title, and a picture. In the project's content types folder, I've added a person.xml file. Every content has a built-in field for display name, which can be used for the person names, so I only need to add inputs for job title and picture. The other XML file I need to add is the descriptor for the person list part. I'm adding three inputs to the configuration a text line for the title, a text area for the text, and a content selector for adding person contents. At this point I can redeploy the updated app to show you the forms that are defined by the content type and part descriptor I just added. I'll create a folder for the person contents and add a person content for myself. This form was created by this XML file. I've created person contents for Enonix founders. Now I'm editing the person list part to add them. 
I could fill out the form, but it still isn't dynamic until I complete the final two steps. First, I'll modify the controller JavaScript file to pass the form's config values to the HTML file. Then, I'll need to modify the HTML file with timeleaf attributes to display the config values. First, I'll edit the controller to collect the form values. I need to add the portal library so I can get the component and its configuration as a JavaScript object. I'll also add a model object with the config values for the title and the text of the part. Adding the person contents is a bit more complicated. For the sake of simplifying this demonstration, I'll get back to that later. Now I'll update the HTML file to display the title and text that were passed in the model object. All I need to do here is add the timeleaf attribute datathtext to the h2 with the value title. I'll do the same to the p with the class equals lead, but this time I'll use datathutext for unescaped text. This allows the editor to add some HTML to the text, like a line break or em. Now I'll redeploy the app and check that the title and text are indeed dynamic and configurable. As you can see, changing the title and the text in the form updates the title and text on the page. The part is almost done, but I'll need to modify the controller and HTML files again to show the selected person contents. When the person contents are added to the part, we only get the IDs of the person contents in the config. I'll need to add the content library to retrieve the entire person contents with their data. I'll make a person's array to store the data that I need for each person content. If there is only one person content added, then its key won't be returned as an array, so I have to check for this and make it an array if it's not already. Now I'll add a for each that will loop through the person content keys and retrieve each content. I'll set the name, job title, and image key. Now I'll have to make the image URL from the key of the image. The last thing to do in the loop is to push the object with the name, job title, and image URL to the person's array. Finally, I'll add the person's array to the model that gets passed to the HTML file. Now it's time to make the final edits to the HTML file. We need Timeleaf to loop through each person in the person's array. This is achieved with the attribute datathEach. I'll update the image src attribute to use person.imageURL. The name and job title are both in the h3 element, but the job title is in its own small element, so I'll have to add a div with datathtext for the name. But I don't want the div element to render, so I'll use datathremove tag. Finally, I'll add the job title to the small element. We only want the dynamic person contents to render, so I'll add datath remove all to the other hard-coded people. Now I'll build and deploy the app one last time and confirm that it's working. Indeed, everything seems to be working now. You may have noticed that the original HTML had six people in groups of three, and these could be paged with the arrow links. This part would need to be modified further to pull this off, but that's outside the scope of this tutorial. You've seen how to create a content type and a configurable component part using Anonic XP's MVC structure with XML for the models, HTML with Timeleaf for the view, and server-side JavaScript for the controller. Page components and layouts are created the same way. Thank you for watching. We look forward to seeing all the wonderful things you will create with Enonic XP.